Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this new day, Lord. We submit ourselves unto your loving hands, Father God. We thank you that you have given us given us the uh, knowledge and the understanding how to live our lives through your word, Lord. Help us to use it and be your overcomers, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are now in chapter 9 where we talk about an overcomer's lifestyle. So we've understood so far that we have authority in Christ Jesus and we must use the authority. We've also understood how the enemy works, his strategies, his tactics. So what kind of a lifestyle should a believer have such that the enemy cannot touch us? Okay. Uh, so that's what we will discuss. So the first thing is to understand where we are right now. So us being in Christ is already a place of immunity for us. Immunity meaning uh, Satan cannot touch us. So could somebody read for us uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. So one person may please read uh, that verse and another person 1 John 5 verses 18 and 19. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 If then you were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God Okay fine so um, can you just come again the same verse For I want you uh, Colossians 3 chap uh, chapter 3 verse 1 If then you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, please go ahead. 1 John 5, 18, 19. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God needs himself, keeps himself, and the weak one does not touch him. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the sword of the big one. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, Colossians 3 verse 1 says, if you were raised with Christ. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's, it's just talking about the fact that spiritually, we now have a new life. Okay. With Christ, Christ is seated. Uh, in the heavenly places and we've also talked about how we are now positionally seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So uh, our position or positional reality is we are in Christ. Okay. There are two things but that we must consider when we say that we are in Christ. One is of course the position. The second one is what um, you know um, we, we read from 1st John chapter 5 that uh, when we walk right with our relationship right with the Lord, then the enemy cannot touch us. So positionally, are we righteous? Yes. But in practice or in actuality, when we are living our lives in that manner also, in righteousness, what happens? The verse says that the enemy cannot touch us. Okay, so both are necessary. Both are necessary and both talk about how we are really in Christ spiritually and our life, you know, as we live it out, we are still in Christ. And that way, Satan does not have access to us. Uh, so you know, that's very important. The second thing for us to understand, okay, we've understood that the positional reality is important and our walk with the Lord is important. That will uh, prevent us uh, from, you know, the, the enemy um, uh, sort of making an entry into our lives. The second important thing for a believer to stay protected is intimacy with God. Okay, So when we say intimacy, intimacy is a relationship which is very strong. 
which is very close. So a close relationship with God. We all know Psalm 91. So what does Psalm 91 say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So it gives us a picture that somebody is staying in a close relationship with God. Isn't it? He who dwells in the secret place. Secret place is a hidden away place, right? a quiet place where we are spending time with the Lord. So for a believer, a place like that, what does the, the passage say? It says it's the shelter, isn't it? If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you'll abide in the shadow of the Almighty, the shelter of the Almighty. So shadow, shelter, all this talks about protection. First of all, we are in Christ. That is our place of protection. We are walking with Christ. That is our place of protection. Now, intimacy. Is intimacy um, something that all believers walk in? No. It's a choice. Okay, Automatically, uh, a close relationship doesn't happen. One really needs to go after it or make a choice. So as a believer, if I make a choice for intimacy, the Bible says we will be protected. Okay, intimacy is a place of protection. Now, another time in the Bible where we notice a close relationship that man had with God without the entrance of sin is the Garden of Eden, isn't it? So in the Garden of Eden, we know that God came, he communed with man, he fellowshiped with man. So there were certain qualities of that first fellowship, when we look at that, we recognize that it was a safe place actually for man. So what are the features of that initial communion of man and God in the garden? You know, we see that God had a relationship and man acknowledged the relationship. So even today, when we recognize you know, that we have a relationship with God, we uh, pursue that relationship. It's good, right? That that talks of intimacy. Then what else was there in the garden? One, of course, was relationship. But the other thing we notice is there was submission. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed, there was submission. So uh, whatever God was saying, Adam and Eve were walking in obedience to that. So that also is you know, it was protection for them because sin never entered as long as they were obedient to God. So relationship is one, but submission is the other thing that kept them safe. Uh, and continuing to look at what happened then was also responsibility. Responsibility is God gave them things to do. So he told them, okay, Adam, Eve, you take care of the garden, tend the garden. So uh, the first job, if you want to call it, that mankind ever had is gardening. So God told them, okay, you both be gardeners. So there was a responsibility which was given to them. And not just to tend the plants, but he also said protect the garden. So it was actually their responsibility to protect it from intruders. But what happened? They couldn't manage that role. Satan came, he deceived, and they let it happen. So we notice that as long as they were in a close relationship with God, God, and they were simply doing what God told them to do. So apply it to us today, right? So we are in a strong relationship with God. We are walking in obedience to God. Okay, God called me to be um, in this season of life a student. Uh, God called me to be a parent. God called me to be, you know, a spouse, whatever. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Automatically, there's protection. Satan can't mess with you. If you're just walking in these normal things, isn't it? So that itself is showing us that, uh, you know, you have to just walk aligned 
to whatever God is calling you to do. And that will protect you from the attack of the enemy. And one more important thing which was in the garden was God gave them dominion. So they held dominion in the garden. Dominion, authority, so they could exercise authority. You see how God told Adam, okay, you now name all the uh, creatures. So he had the authority. God gave him. It's your responsibility. You lead. You call. And then he gives everyone name. So he's using his dominion. He's using his authority in that manner. And things are going on very well. So the same thing applies for us today. What does God call you to do? If you just position yourself there, position yourself in a close relationship with God, submit to God, do what God is calling you to do, use your dominion, you'll be safe. OK? Uh, and, and, and that's the lesson that we read. So automatically, you could say that even when there was no so-called weapon to protect themselves, did God give them any guns or swords and say, OK, protect yourself? He didn't, because it was not needed. So before there were weapons, these are the weapons that they had. Just fulfill your role. And it's only later that we see in scripture that you know we talk about the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and all. So weapons came in for protection later on. But when we are in that place of intimacy, obedience, submission, recognizing our dominion, Right? Taking up our responsibility, Satan cannot even touch us. That's what we read. So uh, it, it's very simple uh, for us to stay protected from the enemy if we are able to do just these basic things. Of course, we'll come to other things that one can do to be protected from the devil. So OK, fine. We understood uh, by virtue of the fact that we are positioned in Christ, we are walking with Christ, we are in intimacy with God, we uh, recognize our role and responsibility, we are protected. The next important thing is to be consecrated. Okay, Consecrated. Again, consecration has to do with submission. And uh, again and again, we dealt with James chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh, which says submit to God. So it simply means that everything which is a part of us, we surrender to God. For example, our thoughts. Okay. And we say, God, I give my thoughts to you. I dedicate my thoughts to you. So then what do we do? Uh, we, we make sure that every thought we think is a pleasing thought to God. Okay? So then what happens? My thought life is consecrated. It is dedicated to the Lord. So if my thought life is consecrated, everything moves from the thoughts. So thoughts then become my actions. My actions um, you know, uh, are reflective of my behavior. My behavior, as I repeat it, becomes my lifestyle, isn't it? So everything is starting from here. But I have dedicated my thoughts to the Lord. And that is, again, submission. So I submit to God. And then I resist the devil. So when I'm submitted, the enemy cannot um, you know, find a loophole. So whenever we dedicate, or we say, OK, I dedicate my resources, I dedicate my time, so that everything that we have, we can actually dedicate it to the Lord. That's what we see in scripture. So, uh, And we said this earlier when we talked about spiritual influence. Anything which is dedicated becomes an expression of that spirit. Remember, even when people sacrifice, they do dedications, other gods, what happens? That object becomes an expression of that god. Okay, Or that person you find, right? We, we see that manifestation of demon spirit. So many things happen. Why? Because they dedicated that individual. Same way, we are doing the opposite. I'm dedicating myself, my resources, my body. To God and uh, that way Satan cannot touch us. Okay, now what are the things that can protect me and help me be an overcomer? I must also put on the armor. Okay, now what's happening in the world? We have uh, an active 
uh, enemy known as Satan. He's the adversary. He wants to attack everyone. So to protect myself, uh, I need some weapons now. Okay, It's not like the garden situation anymore because Satan now he has, um, you know, um, he still has time on the earth. And so uh, God wants us. He God knows that we need some weapons. So in Ephesians chapter 6, we talk about the armor of God. So what are the parts of the armor of God? They have been listed. And for a believer, we have to put on all the parts of the armor. So it says put on, which simply means that just because I'm a believer, I am not automatically protected, you know, uh, as I step out. But it's only when I put on the armor that I can walk protected. So that means not all believers are protected, isn't it? We may come under the attack of the devil. So what are the parts of the uh, uh, armor? The helmet of salvation. Okay, helmet of salvation. The meaning is in my mind, I understand that I am saved. And what is it to be saved? Isn't it? So, uh, to be saved means I am in the kingdom of God. To be saved means that every bless blessing of the cross is mine. So, all that I understand. So, when I understand that, any believer who understands these things, can the uh, enemy fool them easily? Cannot. So, that's what helmet of salvation means so my mind is aware i walk with a renewed mind then breastplate of righteousness breastplate of righteousness is protecting some very important parts uh, of our body that help us function for example breathing so important okay uh, heart heart beating so important so my chest is that area is very important so in warfare what would the enemy want to do attack right your chest because there are some really important organs there uh, but god says let's protect the important parts of who you are your heart with the breastplate of righteousness what is the meaning the meaning simply is i understand that christ became sin for me so that i can become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so when i have that understanding my heart is protected satan cannot keep accusing i'll be like oh enough i already know who i am satan you can't do this to me so that is breastplate of righteousness and breastplate of righteousness is also walking in a right relationship with god so when i'm doing the right thing is it easy for satan to accuse me of course not that is also for my own protection right so i am protected helmet is there breastplate is there belt of truth Belt of truth. What is that? You see, when the Roman, and we are talking about the Roman armor. So you must, you can look it up. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not projecting a picture here for, for you, but you can Google it and you can see how the armor actually looks. Uh, they had a belt to hold everything in place. Okay. So today, there is something that holds everything in place in our lives. What is that? The truth of God's word. So if I have the truth of God's word, again, any believer who knows the word of God, he knows right from wrong, he has a you know discernment that he has gained by studying the word of God, can Satan trick them easily? Cannot. Okay. So that is my protection. I know the word and I'm living by the word. Satan cannot uh, easily attack us. Shoes of the gospel. Shoes of the gospel means to, again, have the knowledge of salvation, but be able to take it to others and share it with others. Okay, So we tell others about Jesus. We bring others to the knowledge of the Lord. That is also our protection. Because, you see, um, we have understood, we have tasted and seen, but now we have come to a place where... You know, we, we are excited about the message. What will happen if a believer is not excited? An unexcited believer, can the enemy do something? He can. And in fact, he likes if we are discouraged, if we are bored, if we are lazy, 
right? He likes such believers because a part of the weapon is missing over there, right? But when we are excited about the truth, excited to share about Jesus, he knows, hey, I cannot do anything to this person. They are very well aware of what Jesus has done and they also want to share it. So the gospel of peace, uh, when we have shoes of the gospel of peace, that also protects us. And you have something known as the shield of faith. Shield is, you hold it in your hand. And if you look at, at the Roman armor, you'll see a round um, you know, shield, which they kind of grasp it like this. Yeah. And when they hold it in front, what happens? If there are arrows, generally, yeah, it's a defense. So if there are arrows, they come hit it. Either the arrow will get damaged or it will be re, you know, redirected away from the person. So what is God saying? God is saying, you know, one of the important things for a believer is faith. When we lose faith, Satan can come in. Faith is so important. Imagine if Abraham, if he somewhere along his journey, he stopped believing. God told him, you will, you will have a son, uh, you know, you, Sarah, and you will bear a child. What if he stopped believing? He's the father of faith, right? We learn faith from him. If he did not believe, he would have never seen the birth of Isaac. And, you know, many other promises would, would be unfulfilled. But thank God, he had a weapon. And that weapon is faith. Never stop believing. Okay? Never stop believing in the word of God. And then the enemy cannot attack us. But the moment we bring down our faith, again, you see the chest area or anywhere, anywhere that Satan may attack. What is it that is keeping him away? The shield. A believer who, who believes, right? I think that's why they call us believer, right? Because that's our job description. We are supposed to believe uh, in who God is, what he's saying. Satan cannot attack. You're holding your faith everywhere. And the arrows can't touch us. So having a heart of faith, always build up your faith in God and you will be protected. So till now, we read about um, the defensive weapons or, or yeah, defensive weapons or defensive part of the armor. Now there is one offensive weapon. Okay, defensive means I protect myself. But offensive means I go after the devil. Okay, I go after the enemy. What is that offensive piece of armor? Which is the part that I have not talked sword about? The sword. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So if I want to chase the devil, I want to, I want to run after the devil, what should I do? I need the word. Okay, the so that is the sword of the spirit. I take the word and I attack the devil. Right? So whenever I use the word, uh, it's you can imagine the lie of the devil just gets crushed. It's gone. It disappears. So that is the power of the word of God, which is why God is saying, do you want to fight the devil? Be immune against the devil. Overcome the devil. Keep the word in your heart. Keep the word in your heart, in your mouth. And when you speak it, the enemy is destroyed. Right? So powerful. So protect yourself, yes. But also, we should know how to chase the devil and destroy him. And that is through the word of God. So Paul used you know, all these parts to help us understand how our Christian walk should be. Be a very aware Christian, uh, aware of what salvation is, aware of the word of God. Uh, and that way we will overcome the enemy. The next uh, part here that will help us um, stay strong against the enemy's attack is faith. Faith, we also talked about it as a shield. Okay, But it's so, so important that without faith, right, we will not be able to um, do exploits in the kingdom of God. You remember Jesus? He said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, what can you do? Move the mountain. So if I want to be an overcomer, I've got to be a believer, but a believer whose heart has faith. So with faith, 
the enemy can bring a mountain but i can uproot the mountain isn't it so faith is very important and it will protect us it will help us move forward with god uh, and you know that is something that we can never compromise on so faith is uh, we saw how in the armor it's a defensive weapon but it is also an offensive weapon because as i'm telling you if you use your faith you are destroying uh, you know the works of the evil one and always build our hearts with the faith that comes by hearing the word of god so how do you build faith okay faith is good we all know faith is good how can i get this faith hmm? exercise meaning what go out and exercise in the sun which exercise do we want okay um, i think what uh, prince is saying is you use your faith each time right then you get stronger okay that makes sense okay so uh, a lot of people hear the word again and again and again but still they lack faith you're correct that is the that is the uh, you know answer which will give you the points hearing hearing by the word of god that is the exact answer but i'm saying we must understand what it means okay hearing the word is yes we we know the word but you got to really receive the word we have to believe the word isn't it meditate the word you remember the parable uh, jesus said if you don't understand the the word is the seed but if the person who is listening does not understand then it doesn't benefit that person so it's not just hearing you know sometimes we think ha huh, just hear 100 times hear 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 nothing goes inside then there's no faith no nothing is being built but if i want faith take the word think about the word understand the word isn't it digest it's like sugar cane anybody eaten sugar cane how do you eat it <laughs> they're showing the action how they eat it yeah you you chew it up uh, but how do you eat it till the end or mango like you just relish it right till all the juices everything nothing is left uh, there are people who even like licking their hands sometimes because they don't want anything left of the fruit so hearing hearing by the word of god is like that where we take the word understand it you know receive what the word is releasing okay uh, strengthen our hearts fully put our hope in the word okay so that way what happens that's when faith is being built up there are other things also we can do with the word uh, you listen to the word understand it and all but then you could um, pray the word isn't it we can pray the word um uh, like um, just tell me any prayer that you pray from the word of god okay for example paul you know when he prayed for the churches he prayed something like um, uh, may you have the spirit of uh, revelation may you be enlightened so we see that in the word so when i'm trying to hear that word and faith is coming into my heart like okay there is enlightenment revelation available god give me that revelation so when i start praying that word that word works for me so that's how you use the word to build faith i must hear it i must understand it i must desire it i must pray it then what else we can memorize it isn't it we can speak it we can confess it where for example you know uh, my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory that is the word what does it say it says god will provide so when i'm thinking to myself about my lack about not having enough or you know going through financial cr uh, crisis i say i declare god is my provider god has a covenant of provision for me isn't it uh, he said that according to his riches in glory so i will have an abundance what's happening 
word got into me now word is coming out of me okay that's when i'm really moving in faith now i'm i have built faith in that area by meditating on the word so that's how this faith is developed so faith is both a defense satan can't get us easily if you have faith in your heart but it's also an offense so when he sees a believer oh look at the way he's confessing declaring oh no let's run away from here so faith becomes a weapon that you face the enemy with so build faith build faith about uh, you know what god has promised for your future build faith about your family build faith about your identity uh, so in our um, apc app i don't know how many people have seen it but uh, we have uh, an app you can download it from the play store and then uh, in that if you go there is something known as a to z declarations okay so that is something that like even i am practicing to use during my prayer time so from there i read those confessions that you know uh, i am healed by the stripes of jesus so what am i doing i'm releasing my faith with my words so what's happening that's an overcomers lifestyle because its word is going into me and now the word is coming out from a place of faith so when we live like that it becomes very difficult for the enemy to touch us yeah, is it making sense everyone is it helping should i explain or should i just go quickly all right that's good fine so how is the online batch doing here let's check okay uh all right so some answers have uh, come in i uh, hope you can all hear me now um kennedy i see your message there but i'm assuming by now you can hear me properly mm, some comments meditate god's word and pray sincerely to overcome that's true okay kennedy can hear and kennedy um you're saying pray for the right things and believe that they will come true and cast out all doubts out of your mind when it comes to faith uh, this is a way we can exercise our faith oh of course coming to the exercise okay thank you viku uh, you can also hear us so exercise what um, prince said is faith often you put it into practice so any muscle that you exercise what happens it becomes strong okay that all of us know great so <laughs> let's uh, exercise our faith muscle also now what else is going to make us strong against the enemy uh prayer prayer and intercession so do you remember there was a time when uh, peter came he was talking to jesus and jesus told him about the mistake he would make in the future that you know he would fall uh, he would deny jesus but jesus said i have prayed for you right because uh, jesus knew that satan is trying to create an issue which will come up later but that should not destroy peter's faith that's what jesus wanted so which weapon did jesus use he said i have prayed for you peter i have prayed for you so when we pray what is happening protection isn't it so we are praying about our life our ministry can challenges come they can come but we are still protected because prayer what does it do it we have talked about it you know it foils the attacks of the devil uh, it destroys the attacks of the devil sometimes when we pray we can also um prophetically know what satan is doing you know uh, especially when we um you know there are times when we sense isn't it maybe about our family member or somebody we just sense and uh, we pray for them but that might be the exact time when they are going through something so what is god doing god is helping us bring that protection on their lives in the same way over our own lives when we pray when you pray for yourself you overcome the devil you can even demolish the um attacks which satan creates see when we think about satan no it's like this uh in in bible times people would forge weapons they would make weapons like you can imagine 
somebody is taking a piece of metal and you know they are heating it up and they are bending it they are uh, polishing it and they are you know making it into a sword just think about it like that so when the enemy is forging a weapon he's getting ready he has a plan in his mind this is what i'm going to do to so and so so he's making a weapon you see when i'm praying what happens what he is making also can be destroyed you understand so that's how it works and that's why prayer is so important when we are praying we can destroy before he forms it or let's say he forms something there's a stronghold uh, some demonic spirits are already at work but when i pray i can also go and destroy what is formed all right so uh, this helps me overcome the devil so be a person of prayer and satan cannot um, attack or we will rather overcome fasting fasting is also very important uh, it helps us today uh, many of you are fasting so i just want to encourage you that fasting also brings protection on our lives against the devil and we overcome uh, satan you know through uh, prayer and fasting so we know that in daniel chapter 10 Daniel was fasting and at that time what happened there was an answer to prayer which needed to come to Daniel but there was war in the heavenlies isn't it the prince of persia and the prince of uh, greece they were stopping the answer to come to Daniel but when this happened how is it that Daniel could overcome he is in devotion in prayer and fasting so when he was in prayer and fasting what happened it's amazing we are here praying and fasting but through our prayer and fasting god is moving things in the heavenlies you see so an angel was sent so an angel goes uh, fights these principalities and the answer comes through so these are all weapons actually god has given the weapon of faith the weapon of prayer the weapon of fasting so when a believer develops these things in their life what happens it's you know satan is no match like um, satan is no match to what god is doing right so uh, we must remember and practice these things in our daily lives and it'll really help us overcome the enemy so um yeah there are other things about fasting which are mentioned here which we dwelt dealt with earlier in prayer and intercession what are the other benefits of uh, fasting fasting will help us deepen our hunger for god okay so that is the result which it gives us so when i fast in the natural my spiritual hunger or passion or focus for god will increase okay uh, and fasting also helps me overcome my flesh i i gain more strength or power over my flesh so my will is strengthened to do what god wants me to do and fasting also helps eliminate doubt and unbelief so uh, let's remember that a right relationship with god knowing who we are in christ having an intimate relationship with god just taking up the responsibility which god has told us to do you remember the time when david he was supposed to go to war but he was not at war right he was in his house and that led him to sin isn't it so being at the wrong place when god wants you to be in your responsibility is also like an open door we're giving the enemy a chance so just take on the uh, responsibility which god has given uh, walk with it put on the weapons and uh, live a life which has faith a prayer fasting all this automatically will keep us safe from the enemy so uh, if there are no questions we can pray and close for today if there are questions yes of course we can take it up all right so uh, let's pray then and i just want to request uh, be one of you
actively spray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. And we come before you again in the name of Jesus, Lord. And uh, I surrender each one of you in your hand, Father. But what we learn today's session, Lord, help us, give us knowledge, understanding your word, Father. And we can understand your word, Father Jesus. Thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, everyone. Please work on your assignments. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next class. God bless. Yeah, but you can work on it now also, no? No, 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 no extension. <laughs> the last date is the given date. Yeah.